Strayer99 here. Uh, Alright guys, I'm going to entitle this video AR308 Build Accuracy and Reduced Recoil. Before I get started, I'd like to give a shout out uh, to Deboris Rex and his Sniper 101 series. Outstanding uh, series of videos. If you work your way through those videos, um, you'll really understand a lot of what I'm trying to accomplish here. You'll also gain a lot of knowledge about long range precision shooting. Uh, big shout out to Ammo Smith as well. Uh, his videos on precision reloading were a great help to me. I've employed uh, those practices in both this rifle and several of my others. So uh, thanks to those two guys uh, for all your hard work. There will be a couple other videos mentioned, especially when it comes to products during the course of the video. Uh, but I just wanted to give a special shout out to those two guys. Alright, thanks. Let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Strayer99. Um, I'm here, uh, very excited about my new uh, AR-308 build. It's a DPMS pattern generation one. Um, I am, I've got two goals in mind. Number one is accuracy. And number two is, uh, can I mitigate recoil and muzzle rise as much as I can uh, to make this a very comfortable shooting gun, a very accurate uh, shooting gun, but also my second shot, I want to be just as accurate as my first shot. I want to get back on target very quickly. So if I can mitigate any type of felt recoil um, and stay on target, um, I would I, I would value that. So I'm uh, trying to attempt two things, uh, like I said, accuracy and mitigation of felt recoil. For accuracy's sake, um, I've decided to go with a Criterion 20-inch, um, 111 twist, nitrided, rifle length gas system barrel with an adjustable gas block. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to try to use a little Indian head shellac when I made it to the upper receiver, uh, kind of like betting your bolt gun, um, it's a must. I'm wondering if there's any wiggle room whatsoever when I attach it to my upper, if I can bed that and increase the accuracy. Uh, I'll probably add that part to the video if I do it. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to. Okay, so let's get started on the parts I selected for this rifle build. Um, I'm going to go over some parts, not all of them. Uh, there's plenty of videos online uh, with the pros and cons of the parts and other people reviewing them, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, but we'll go over some of the parts I selected for this rifle. Okay guys, let's go over the muzzle brake I selected. It is a Precision Armament M4-72 Severe Duty Compensator. Uh, this has been tested uh, by Jeremy S. Uh, in his video uh, 308 Muzzle Brake Shootout, where he had a very scientific uh, approach to testing uh, recoil with uh, various muzzle brakes. Uh, very well done video, I recommend watching it. Uh, this muzzle um, compensator was the best one uh, he tested, and it's the same in their 556. Five, uh, he's tested, I would say, probably no less than 50 brakes, and the Precision Armament uh, Severe Duty Compensator is by far the best compensator on the market, uh, especially for the price. The buffer that I decided to go with is a Kintec Corporation um, recoil buffer designed for the 308. The particular one I selected is for the collapsible stock size. It's uh, 2.7 inches and I believe weighs 5 ounces. It got 4.3 out of 5 stars on Brownell's website. It's a little bit more expensive than uh, most other buffers, uh, but I'm hoping that the hydraulic component to it will uh, help reduce recoil and help me get back on target a little bit quicker. So it was worth it to me to spend a little bit more money to see if it would help with reduced recoil. The stock I selected for the rifle is an FAB Defense Recoil Reducing Stock. Um, the part of it that's advantageous is where it actually connects to the collapsible stock to pin into your position. Uh, it has a spring attached to that uh, pin and as the buffer tube uh, has force moving backwards into the stock that spring gives way a little bit and it reduces felt recoil uh, by giving uh, within the stock frame the buffer slides within the actual buttstock itself. Uh, like I said you can read uh, and watch some videos uh, where it's been reviewed further but I thought it was worth a try as well. One of the ways to mitigate uh, recoil is with an adjustable gas block. 
as you decrease the amount of gas coming back into the bolt, you can decrease the amount of force driving the bolt back, which translates to felt recoil. Uh, in adjusting my gas block to make sure that the rifle would function during my tests, I tuned the gas block to the minimum charge of 41 grains of Varget. Uh, it turns out that uh, my most accurate uh, loads were around 44 to 44.5 uh, grains of Varget. With this being said, my tuning of the gas block is not optimum yet. Um, once I do the second part of the load development with the smaller increments at 100 yards, I will create an extra five rounds where I can finally tune uh, the gas block to approximately those powder charges. Uh, that way I can decrease the amount of gas coming back into the bolt carrier group. For the trigger, I selected a Timney trigger. It's a two-stage trigger, and I believe it uh, adjusts down to around two pounds. Enough said there. Timney triggers stand on their own. Okay, here, guys, I'm putting the anti-seize on the barrel nut. Uh, this is where I'm going to actually bed with the Indian head shellac. Um, I got this idea from a couple videos I watched online. It was very easy to do, and uh, I think it actually gave a pretty good result. After the shellac had set, I ended up separating the barrel from the upper receiver in order to use a shim for correct timing of my uh, gas uh, tube. And the barrel did separate from the upper receiver with uh, not much force. Uh, and when I went to put the barrel back into the receiver after the shims were uh, placed, the barrel and the upper receiver were extremely tight. I had to press very hard to get that upper um, end barrel to uh, go back together, and there was absolutely no play. I think I made a good decision. Okay, so what did I do for case preparation? Well, first off, I started with um, once fired Lake uh, City brass. Uh, I resized it, full length resized, and decapped. I then uh, trimmed the cases to Sammy spec. Once the cases were trimmed, I deburdened, dechafered. Uh, then I swaged the primer pocket, then uniformed the primer pocket, and then uniformed the flash hole. Uh, after that, I tumbled them into walnut uh, medium in my tumbler uh, for at least an hour and a half, and they came out uh, shiny new 308 cases. Okay, after meticulously measuring the powder charge on each cartridge, uh, I then seated the bullets to an overall case length of 2.8 inches. Uh, I did allow for a, a deviation of 0 0.005 inches or uh, five thousandth of an inch up or down uh, depending on the meta plate. I then, uh, after measuring each cartridge individually, I then fed uh, 20 of them into a magazine at a time and checked that the they were totally magazine compatible. Okay guys, let's start with my powder choice. Um, Varget, uh, internet research, personal experience, uh, one of the best. Uh, so I looked at the manufacturer specifications for a 168 grain out of a 20 inch barrel. It said to start with 41 grains and I could increase up to 45 grains as a max load. I went at uh, increments of 0.5. Um, so in doing that, uh, I think I made about 45 bullets um, and stepped it up. I measured each one individually. Trickle charged each one on a scale. Uh, very important. Um, I double, triple checked. I used tweezers to pull out grains so it was exactly at spec. Okay, now that I have 50 plus rounds and have created a uh, step load development uh, to determine the best uh, cartridge load for this 308, uh, it's time to take it to the range and start recording some data. Okay, so I'm here at the range and uh, I've set up on the 50 yard line. I would have loved to set up on the 100 yard line. However, uh, there was a lot of guys on the 100 yard line. It was very crammed for space and I needed at least three lanes to kind of spread out and set up uh, my gear and I didn't want to be calling a cold range when there was a lot of people around and I was just going to be futzing around with a chronograph and a camera. 
so unfortunately, uh, all this data is uh, for the MOA measurements is going to be extrapolated out to 100 yards, uh, but I was on the 50-yard line. Uh, for further testing, that won't be the case. Uh, I don't think I'll set up a video camera for any further uh, video of me actually shooting the gun. So all the testing uh, from now on will be done on the 100-yard line. Barrel break-in procedure. So this is a 20-inch, uh, 1 in 11 twist, nitrided criterion barrel. Uh, nitrided barrels are extremely hard, uh, and they don't quite have the same break-in process as a stainless steel barrel would. Um, so I started by cleaning the barrel uh, before assembling the gun with a bore guide and uh, patches uh, soaked in sweets, uh, 90, or not, number 9. Uh, after assembling the rifle, I did pass a bore snake through the bore um, with CPL on the first one third and dry on the last two thirds. Uh, I then shot two shots uh, and then ran the bore snake through uh, a couple times and then I repeated that for the first ten shots. So after every two shots for the first ten, I ran a bore snake through. Uh, then I switched to every five shots, uh, I ran a bore snake through and that was the remainder of the ladder test with the powder tested charges. Once the testing was completed, I did give the bore a thorough cleaning with a bore guide, uh, a nylon brush soaked in uh, sweets number nine, passed through the bore, not exiting the muzzle I have four times, uh, and then retrieved the brush and switched to patches. I ran two soaked patches through, uh, and then I switched to dry patches. Um, after the third dry patch, there was no more material coming out of the barrel, no more powder fouling. Uh, and I considered the bore clean. Uh, I will not clean the bore again until I've shot another 50 rounds through it and I haven't decided whether I'm actually going to clean the bore at that point. I'm trying to establish a copper equilibrium now and uh, my powder fouling uh, should be reestablished pretty quickly. Uh, but now I'm going for uh, copper equilibrium in the bore and I'll wait till I start to see a decrease in accuracy before I give it a full bore cleaning once again. Okay, for now one of the most important parts of the video, and by far one of the most important parts of the video. Um, so initially, without fine-tuning our loads, um, we're getting, uh, if you look at the chart, uh, at 44 grains, we're getting a standard deviation of 17. At 44.5, we're getting a standard deviation of 12. If you look at the MOAs, which, you know, these are MOAs calculated at 50 yards, extrapolated out to 100 yards. I don't have enough scientific evidence to tell you that the 44 grains versus the 44.5 grains is better. It, this, the, that small increment could very easily be explained by my trigger pull or any other variable, a slight gust of wind. So I'm not convinced that I found uh, the sweet spot here. I'm going to fine tune uh, the powder charge, obviously. Uh, but if you look at the standard deviation and then also the extreme spread, I think I have a very consistent round, uh, or at least a node here, that I can develop a little bit further. I'm very happy knowing that at least from 44 to 44.5, there's a very um, accurate round that can be further developed. Uh, that's, that's very exciting to me. I think that means that the barrel is doing well, that my hand loads are doing well, and that I've got a little bit more work to do, but with a little bit more hard work, I might, I just might be able to get this rifle under 0 0.75 MOAs at 100 yards. That would be awesome. I would love to have a uh, an AR-10 308 platform rifle shooting sub-MOA rounds, but even more than sub-MOA, I would love to have them approaching 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 MOAs at 100 yards. Uh, that might actually get me a gun that I'm willing to use uh, in competition. So what's next in my load development process? Well, we know that 44 grains of Varget and 44.5 grains of Varget were very accurate, consistent loads with uh, extreme spreads that were low and standard deviations that were also very low. So I'm going to create a step 
ladder uh, starting at 43.8 grains of Varget and moving at 0.2 grains uh, increments increasing all the way to 44.8. I'm hoping to find in there um, the perfect round. Uh, I'll be evaluating the rounds uh, across the chronograph and then measuring the MOA. This will all be done at 100 yards. I will no longer use uh, 50 yards uh, um, for any load testing. Okay, and now for the results. So at 100 yards, using 44 grains of Varget and a 168 grain Nosler Custom Competition uh, boat tail hollow point, I was able to achieve an MOA of .055 at 100 yards for a five shot group. Pretty impressive for an AR Platform 308. Okay, so the chronograph data for this five shot group was very encouraging. Uh, the average speed was 2,692 feet per second. Uh, the extreme spread was 27 and the standard deviation was 10, which is reduced from 17 uh, with the first load group that was tested for 44 grains of Varget. In all likelihood, that's probably uh, due to the buildup of copper in the bore. So of the two stated goals, accuracy and reduced felt recoil, I think I've achieved uh, the accuracy part. I've got a good load developed here and I'm very happy with my Criterion uh, nitrided 20 inch 1 and 11 twist barrel. Um, I believe the gun is going to be a tack driver. Uh, I'm very happy about that. I look forward to shooting the next 50 rounds uh, that I'm in the process of making now. I think that the gun is going to serve me well overall. So of the two stated goals, the first one being accuracy and the second one being reduced recoil, um, I'm still evalu evaluating the reduced recoil. The next thing I need to do is now that I've got my uh, load figured out, I need to adjust my gas block uh, to the lowest possible setting or the least amount of gas coming back into the bolt to hopefully reduce the most amount of recoil. At that point I'll evaluate whether I achieved my second goal which is reduction of felt recoil. Okay so here I am at the range and I have the gas block right now tuned to 41 grains of Varget which my load is actually going to be 44 grains but I'm establishing a baseline so you can see the amount of recoil um, and we can compare it to after I've tuned the gas block. The muzzle doesn't seem to rise that much it seems to be kicked more straight back which is good it's allowing me to get back on target quickly um, but I think I can achieve a little bit less recoil if I tune the gas block to my loads. At this point the gas block is almost tuned. Uh, the bolt comes back but it doesn't completely lock back with the bolt catch. The cartridge is stuck in the upper receiver. Uh, I did one more adjustment and let in a little bit more gas. Uh, fired a couple more rounds and the bolt was cycling completely reliably. It was locking back with an empty magazine uh, and the brass was kicking out a 3 o'clock pattern. A 3 to 4 uh, o'clock pattern which is exactly what I want. Uh, at this point the gas block has been tuned. Goal 2 achieved. Uh, the recoil on this rifle is very manageable. The muzzle doesn't seem to rise as much as uh, kick back in a very horizontal plane and after the cartridge uh, fires uh, when I reacquire the reticle, the gun seems to be exactly where I left it. Uh, so recoil is definitely manageable. The gun returns to where it was and uh, the repeatability is there. And here we go, five shot groups as fast as I can put the reticle on the target. Pretty good, pretty accurate for five shots as fast as I can pull the trigger once the reticle gets back on target. And just for kicks and giggles, standing five shots. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I definitely had fun putting this gun together and working out everything I needed to do to make this gun as accurate as I could get it. A uh, big thanks to Criterion Barrels, uh, very accurate barrels. Uh, Timmy Trigger obviously doesn't hurt. Um, 0 .055 MOAs at 100 yards. I don't think you could ask for much more out of an AR uh, 308. Also, I'm very happy with the recoil reduction I was able to achieve. Um, I do believe that I'm going to uh, probably try a low mass bolt carrier group. Um, I think I might be able to get a little bit more reduction of recoil if I do that. It's an expensive part uh, and you know I don't know when I'll do it. If I do do it, um, I'll definitely update this video and I'll have side-by-side -side camera views 
of the uh, low mass bolt carrier group um, with a tuned gas block and uh, side by side with the uh, bolt carrier group I have in here right now. All right guys, well I'm going to uh, post a parts list at the end of the video uh, for the upper receiver, lower receiver, and the optic I chose. Um, so you guys should be able to follow this video and build your own really accurate 308 um, AR platform rifle. And if you want to go the reduction of roi uh, recoil route as I did, uh, well, you've got a good place to start. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.